Hi, my name is Barry Crompton. Today I'm going to show you around our Porsche Panamera. Then I'll take you for a ride in it, but first I'll tell you a little bit more about it. It's a 3 litre TD V6 Tiptronic S. 2012 on a 62 plate, has done 33,680 miles. It was first registered on the 13th of the 11th, 2012. Fuel economy, urban 34.9 miles per gallon. Extra urban, 50.4 miles per gallon, which I'm sure you'll agree is very, very good, if you can achieve that, that is. Uh, combined is 43.5 miles per gallon. 0 to 60 time of 6.8 seconds. A top speed of 150 miles per hour out of a 250 brake horsepower, 24 valve engine. The extras this car has, metallic paint, 777 pounds new. Privacy glass, 320 pounds. Adaptive air suspension, £2,379. Electric seats with driver memory, £1,222. Bose surround sound system, £825. Power operated rear hatch, £445. Bizanon headlamps, £765. Dashboard trim package in leather, £720. Heated multifunction steering wheel, £182. 20 inch RS Spider design alloy wheels, £2,185. Preparation for mobile phone with Bluetooth, £445. Universal audio interface, £227. Has a full service history and it's an absolutely beautiful car. First day back off holiday today. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to apologise for the unusual angle that I'm filming it from. It's not that I've got taller while I'm on holiday, I've just forgotten to bring my tripod this morning. So I've got my camera, about five grand worth of camera equipment, <laughs> stacked up on a few stones and, 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 and stuff like that. So anyway, back to the car. So, first day back from holiday, you get the holiday blues, <laughs> been sat by sat by a pool for two weeks and you come back and you, you've got to come into work uh, and i've got to say this morning to be fair it was a pleasure this car is absolutely beautiful it's such good value for money um again i always say you could pay a lot more and, and not get a car that drives as good you could pay a hundred thousand pounds and not get a car as, uh, that drives as good as this it's mint it's got a fantastic service history great spec great color combination and on the way up here, there's, um, there's quite a long straight and then a, a roundabout. Um, and whenever I go around this, this roundabout, you, you always feel like you, sometimes you, you're just trying to turn the steering wheel like so. This, you, it, it was if you're on the straight. The, the suspension is so good. Um, as I say, it's beautiful to drive. Normally I would, I would drive this in the, in the country here where, where I, I bring them to photograph. But I, th I think what I'm going to do is go back to my old test route on this uh, and do a bit of dual carriageway, a bit of motorway and a, bit, a few country lanes as well, just to show you exactly how it does drive. So we've got the Xenon headlamps with high pressure headlamp wash, front parking sensors, the low chin spoiler, the coloured all important Porsche badge and the fantastic engine. I must remember to cut a, a video of the engine. It, it's mint. Um, the car was cleaned well, it was cleaned two days ago in preparation for me coming back off holiday, but it's just a bit dusty now, but I can assure you it's absolutely mint inside and out. It's got over mats on inside as well, and, and even the mats are like new. And bearing in mind, this is it's like nine year old car. Uh, it's a credit to its, its previous owner. Got the 20 inch alloys, the, has the colored centers. In fairness, a new set of colored centers w would improve it. That's about the only thing I can see on the car. Uh, there's just a bit of flaking on them, but you can get them off eBay. They're, they're not that expensive. Uh, the little vents here, We've got power folding door mirrors, de so in, in keeping with the, the kind of stealth look. Um, as I say, it's a beautiful car. It's, uh, one thing I did notice, it feels very, very wide on the right road. That, that's one of the reasons I, I don't particularly want to take it through these country lanes because they do get a bit narrow and uh, and... I, I think you'll get, I think you'll get the better idea, you know, just going on normal roads. So we've got the power open boot, and in case I forget to mention it, those fancy keys. The roller blind cover comes up with the tailgate, 
plenty of room in the back. Over here we've got uh, a power socket too. The back seats fold down, really, really nicely finished. Brushed aluminium over the lock mechanism here. It's got an inflation kit in the back and it's also got a huge Bose subwoofer uh, situated under the carpet there and it, it goes through you. When, it, when there's a record with plenty of bass on it, it absolutely goes through you. It's a great system. There you go, there's the power closing. We've got the rear parking sensors and the deployable rear spoiler. That'll go up and down from a switch or I think it comes up you know when you get to like 75 so the cops know you're speeding Porsche have a, uh, a separate kind of body the Porsche design side of, of things and they take other people's designs and Im improve on them and, and in here it <laughs> It's, it's fantastic, it really is. It's only a four-seater, the seats are really, really comfortable, but even the, the armrests, uh, I'll try and remember to, to video those as well. The, the armrest is here, and then just at the back, just here, there's an extension of the armrest. I mean, there's no need to do it, but it just finishes it off. You've got these aluminium air vents here, more air vents up here, a coat hook there, coat hook there, your lights, this, this lovely um, piano black, inset and again aluminium door handle uh, along here it's first time i've first time i've sat in the back of this but what we've got here that's a cup holder and what's these right so here you've got a power socket you've also got a is that an actual cigarette light yeah you've got a cigarette lighter there and uh another cup holder there what's here cubby hole that's that's about it so it's 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 really really nice and well finished and it's just it's a lovely uh, environment to be a passenger in i again i wish i'd remember my tripod because then you you might be able to see a better angle the seats are sculptured the the no messing about with the headrests up and down it, it's all all part of the seat and I, it's it's just like being a not that I've ever been in a private jet, but it's just like what I would imagine it's like to be in a private jet. Um, it's it's beautiful, unmarked, everywhere's unmarked. It's just, it's like jumping in a new car in, in Parker and Parker's. Um, lovely vehicle. As I'm getting out here, I just noticed that the hinges, um, they're, they're not like ordinary car hinges where they're, they're welded to the door and then somebody bangs a pin through them. They're, they're a proper engineering work of art. Um, it's, uh, that really, again, is a real good design. You've also got the paint protection film on the back here so you don't get any chips from the uh, front wheels from stones kicked up. And you've got this uh, sill extension there. I'll just take you for riding it. Two weeks off, completely out of the swing of it. Forgot my tripod, and, and I've just recorded this video in 60 frames a second, so uh, I'm going to have to do uh, a little bit more editing when I get home. That's the, the key two of these. We've got a white and a red one. And it's like a socket on the dashboard, foot on the brake, and then uh, turn on. We've got here... Well, I'll, I'll just read this out. The 16th to 12th, 2014, 15,480 miles, Porsche Center, Colchester, including brake fluid. 16th to 11th, 2017, 24,694 miles, Porsche Center, East London, including brake fluid. 9th to the 5th, 2019, at 30,304 miles, Porsche Center, Kendall, air, air, aircon condenser, so that one to service. 19th to the 5th, 2020, 31,366 miles Porsche Center, Preston, including brake fluid. And then on the 10th of the 2nd, 2021, at 32,035 miles uh, Porsche Center, Preston, visual vehicle health check. Um, the brake fluid thing, 
I don't suppose a, a lot of people know, but brake fluid is uh, hygroscopic and it absorbs water. Uh, if you, you're meant to change it every 12 months. What happens, certainly on a car like this, probably on a normal car it wouldn't matter too much, but on a performance car, when the brakes get red hot, any water in the system turns to steam. Steam can be compressed because uh, it's a gas. So you put your foot on the, the brake and all of a sudden you've got no brakes because you're compressing the, the steam and, and not the brake fluid. So it is important in a car like this to, to have it done. So I, I went through all the, the spec before. I'll try and remember it as we're going, but uh, if not, just, just go back to what I said at the beginning. Uh, what I'm gonna do here, we've got here, you can, on the, the dash here, if I click that, high level selected. Now we're, we're on a really rough car park, so I'm just gonna select high level and then we'll, uh, we'll go. I'll do a bit of this country lane first and then we'll, um, I'll do the motorway and dual carriageway and so on because it's it's kind of a an autobahn storm of this. It's it's a a grand tour, um, not particularly a car that you'd take out in the country. Um, it's it's a car that when you want to get to from one place to another quickly and in comfort, and up the motorways, just deciding which way to go. Um, I suppose I should try and get some drone shots. So I will go this way, I will go this way. Here we go, I'll just give it some gas when we get around this corner, just to uh, show you, but the right, high level's deactivated now. You've got the suspension here, you've got sport there, you can click it into sport, holds it in gear longer. Um, what's going on here, I'm sure this, Chairs moved, so the suspension there, PASM Comfort, Sport, Sport Plus, Comfort's fine. It's uh, I think the the others you if you were taking it on a track or something or you you were on a long flat motorway then then perhaps and you were absolutely gunning it. And that's why you don't go too fast on country lanes um, let's just no I'm, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go fast because the grass has got pretty high now and you, you you can't see if there's any sheep or animals at the side so uh, I'll just go on I'll do a bit of um, drone footage so you can see what it looks like from the uh, from the air and <laughs> from other people's perspective and then I'll, I'll take it on the motorway and uh, switch the cameras back on. But here, there you go, you've got paddle shift, you've got the power folding door mirrors which won't go in because we're going too fast. Knock the selector over like so, change up, change down. I think it's an eight-speed gearbox. It's so good. And I, I think I've gone off Porsches a bit, um, but this this drives quite a lot like a, a Range Rover. It's a lot smoother, that I would say, than the you know the, than the real sports suspension. Uh, perhaps uh, not as harsh as the, the Cayenne either. So you're not getting all this feedback through the steering wheel. It's nice and quiet. Um, as I say, great specification, very economical too. Feels like a very, very wide car. Mr. Uh, Pheasant there just deciding to cross the road at that particular moment. Get out there, oh dear. Not a good day in the country for wildlife today. This is a really, really beautiful car. The one thing I did notice on the way up here, the, it feels like the front um, 
front offside wheel, the tracking is slightly out. You can just feel it through the steering wheel, just feels like it's like trying to go along the road just a little bit sideways. So by the time you get to see this vehicle, it's worn the tyre on the edge. We will have a new tyre on it and uh, it will drive. I mean, it drives fantastic now, don't get me wrong. It's, it's absolutely superb. Certain death corner here. Some, a retired couple there enjoying the day with an early start. Beautiful part of the world here. Yeah, so we'll, anyway, we'll have a new tyre on it, um, so it'll be absolutely perfect. But if you've got a private plate, this car looks like it's just come out of the showroom and you've just bought yourself a hundred grand car or something. This... <laughs> This is, this is all too much for me these days. I love the way it looks. And obviously once you get used to it, muscle memory, and it becomes second nature. You know, you, you can like feel whereabouts the switch is gonna be without taking your eyes off the road. But uh, I mean, it, look, it looks fantastic. But, you know, we've got heated seats. That's the deployable rear spoiler. You can knock the spoiler up and down using that switch. There you've got your suspension, your height adjustment, your stability management or traction control, heated seats that you have got, which, which again I do like and you can do it dead easy. There you go, two switches. The one on the, the left is the fan and the one on the right is the temperature gauge. And as I've said in previous videos, I don't know why they put a digital display on, on the temperature gauges these days. It's not like you just think, oh, I, I want to be at 23.5 degrees centigrade today. You just turn it up till you, you're warm enough or, or cool enough, don't you? So. It just goes like the wind. So economical too, according to the, uh, the, the. The funny thing is, John's actually been using this while uh, I've been away, and uh, it, it was it was bone dry, which is unusual to be fair for him to leave a car bone dry. But I was coming up here, and I said, like, you know, John's. I can't be trusted with money, so John has the petty cash and does everything like that. And I, and I says, oi, petrol for, uh, sorry, diesel for the, the Porsche. I'm going to video it tomorrow. And he, he gave me 20 quid. And I thought, that's not going to wet the bottom of the tank. But it, it, it is. Um, I put 30 quid worth in because I, I didn't want to be stopping for fuel again. But it's remarkably economical. It really is. It's very, very good. I'm going to go down this way, do some drone footage, and then uh, take it on its natural habitat, the motorway and some dual carriageway. I was um, pleasantly surprised, I have to say, coming up this morning here, very, very quiet and smooth, nice. Lovely day as well. Always makes it better. And it is, it's quite, quite funny really, because I, I, I don't know whether anybody else notices, but some cars you get in and I have my, uh, all my music on my iPhone and you set it to shuffle, sometimes it plays a load of tracks that you, you liked at the time, but you, you can take or leave now. 
And this this morning on the way up here, it play, played all my favourite tracks. So it's got like a, it's also got a magical sound system. And we've got navigation there, we can click. Um, there you go, you can click the sat nav on. We've got cruise control, which I'll try and remember to show you on the, the motorway as well. That's just there. Your electronic windows or electric window switches there. Three position electric memory seats uh, here. Height and reach adjustable steering wheel from a um, lever. And then just at the back here where it says airbag and the, the, the centre spoke, there's a little switch on the back. And if you click that, heated steering wheel on, that is the best accessory ever. I forgot to show you all the, the service invoices as well. We've got, we've got a stack of service invoices or invoices to match everything I've just told you, which is always it's great to see. You can't, you can't beat a stamp service book, which we've got, and the uh, bills to back it up. Um, I always go on about service history and digital service history being stupid and a waste of time and uh, not worth the paper it's written on. And somebody said, well, somebody left a comment the other day on my uh, uh, YouTube site, which they quickly retracted when I said this should be in prison along with a garage. But he, he said, you know, service stamps are, are a waste of time because if you're like me, you just go in the local garage and they let you put use their stamp. Well, you know, in my opinion, they should be short, but it's also easy enough to buy a, a, a stamp off eBay. However, what we do, if we haven't got the invoices, we ring the garages and, and we ask, you know, and, and if it's just been stamped, then they've got no record. Because we still come across the uh, the odd garage that did no computer or anything like that. And they, they, but mostly, the people that have no computer, they've got it all up here and they remember the car. So that that's good. Right. I'll, uh, I'll see you in a short while. I'll just do some drone footage. Okay, so change of plan. Um, I've been using my, uh, while I've been on holiday, I've been using my other drone, which you can, uh, it's below a certain weight and you can legally fly just about anywhere. This drone um, is a bit more professional than you you can't fly over other people or within 50 meters of them which is why I use it out in the country and come out here unfortunately while I've been away there's been a, an update uh, to it and um, it won't fly <laughs> I need I need to recalibrate it and to do that I need it the other control connected to my phone and a, a Wi-Fi signal so sadly no drone shots today um, but anyway, we'll make the best of it. I'll uh, just go a bit further through the country and then uh, I'll switch off again and then go on the motorway. I always say it though, I, uh, I just dread electric cars becoming mainstream. This <laughs> update to the, the, the drone won't, you can't use it, won't take off, won't do anything. So uh, I'm pretty sure that'll happen to cars. There'll be a conflict and, and you won't be able to use it until it's sorted out. Again, it's the same with these GoPros. That GoPro, not not 12 months old, just decided it wouldn't switch on. And uh, I've just had to switch all my cameras off again, take the battery out of that, leave it for a bit, put the battery back in, switch it on again. And again, you can imagine electric cars. I've never had to do that with a diesel <laughs> engine. I never. Uh, in a million years and also while I was on holiday um, in your literature from I was going to say 
Thompson's a, he's T two in now, isn't it? And uh, in the, in all the literature, it tells you you can't have lithium batteries in your suitcase that you know to go in the hold. If you have a lithium battery, you have to take it on board in your hand luggage. Um, and as you're queuing up, the Thompson's rep, Tui rep, is going up and down saying you haven't got any lithium batteries in your in your bag, have you? You know, it's got to be in your hand luggage. Um, you get to the counter to put your baggage in and she asks you if you've got any lithium batteries, an iPad phone in your uh, case. And uh, then it's loaded onto the plane. Then as you're waiting to get on the plane, as you're waiting for boarding, there's announcements coming over the intercom. Uh, no lithium batteries. If you've got a lithium battery in your um, suitcase and it's gone in the hole, please make the cabin crew aware. So anyway, I've got, for my drone and my cameras, my camera batteries, I have a special bag, and it's uh, kind of an explosive uh, bag. So I put, all my ba uh, <laughs> I put all my batteries and my drone and everything in this bag, and then seal it all up and put it in my hand luggage. So we're coming back from Croatia, we're on the runway at Dubrovnik, and somebody suddenly remembers they've got a mobile phone in the suitcase so we're then delayed for three quarters of an hour while the cabin crew get this suitcase out of the hold get the mobile phone out and then eventually we take off but the thing the, the thing that worries me is these lithium batteries in a mobile phone if a lithium battery in a mobile phone can bring a plane down what's it going to do when you sat on like <laughs> 2,000, probably 3,000 of the same size. And what's it going to do when one of those goes up on the road or there's a crash? Get a diesel. <laughs> Forget electric cars. They're soulless. They're awful. They, they, they just drive very, very fast in it in, and put nothing to them. No, no machinery, no connect really between the driver and, and the, the road and changing gear and being you know matching your revs and letting your clutch out smooth if, if it's a manual you want or, or just you know I, I just don't I don't believe we're moving towards electric cars I, I just can't I just can't believe it this is fantastic you know, the, the, the engine's purring, that's all part of the driving experience and, uh, and, and making the engine make the noise that you want it to make while you're driving. You know, just, just setting it up tapping the brake, just feathering the brake as you go into a corner and, and swapping and accelerating out of the corner. And you know, these, these electric motors that, as soon as you take your foot off the accelerator, you start slowing down, it starts driving the motor backwards to harvest the energy. It's just awful. There's nothing better than going out for a drive and just getting every corner right, every gear change, accelerating out of a bend. And, and there's just no way an electric car can uh, do that, in my opinion. I dare say there'll be a few of you in the comments that disagree with me but you will be wrong. Just, this is a, a beautiful car. With great spec. And honestly, unless you come and see it, you won't believe how clean it is. 
it's just it's just lovely but this the extended package on the the dash there as well it's um if you look after this and keep it I can I can't see it ever being worth too much less if not going up which they're doing at the moment so I'll just show you the there we go just just changing down not going too mad because as I've said before, it's a it's a wide car, and there are a lot of people with smaller cars who use this same road, who think their small car is a lot wider than it actually is, and take up too much of the road. Like they say, if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much space. When we get on the motorway, there's a, this particular junction of the motorway, there's a long sweeping bend. And you do see quite often people overtake because there's a, there's a left turn to go north and then you sweep past. And you, but you're going in the same direction, but it's to go south. And people accelerate to get past the people who are turning left and then they're going too fast when they actually hit the bend and, and you, you see the brake lights come on and, and the, not, the car not, not exactly chattering, but um, they're, they're kind of um, at the limit of their talents. Oh, I must switch the roundabout collision switch off. So uh, I'll just show you this, um, I don't know whether to, uh, let's just, so that's in sport, comfort, sport, sport plus, and it's showing me that uh, the car is being lowered there in sport plus. So we're really hunkered to the ground. You can, you can feel it, it's a bit go-kartish, which is, is not the way I like to drive. But uh, we'll just, we'll just see. The aircon is icy cold. Make sure the heated steering wheel's off. That was nice and toasty. Nice display there. Oh, the Bose speakers. Right. Ah! I'll do it on the motorway because, or should I? Well, I used to be indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. <laughs> Let's just put. Right, so there we go, that's sound, media. The sound system's brilliant. And uh, even getting back to my holidays, you know, there, there, was a, there was a really good group on at the hotel. You should call them groups these days, I don't know what you call them. A band, a really good band on at the hotel. And, uh, and they sung some records, which aren't my taste at all. But I found myself shazamming them and then downloading them. Even they sound, even those records sound good on here. Right, let's concentrate on this. So, look at this. 
how good, <laughs> how good is this? So that's where everybody accelerates here and then they end up going too fast here. Now I, I'm actually going to slow down because I, because I'm going too fast but so we'll go around here rumble strip all the way around how fantastic is that no ste no steering input after the first one straight round and then onto the motorway. Let's just make sure so I'm doing well I'm doing 71 there so 70 switch the cruise on cruise on push it away doing 69 miles an hour that's cruise on just click it away once more that should take it to 70 we're just accelerating slightly. The sat nav in the second dial across there is, um, well, that's showing me the speed limit of the road I'm on as well. So and then if I go to map, let's just see if I can, three miles. There's nothing set, otherwise, it'd be giving me directions over there. The center. Showing me the speed I'm doing. It's the rev counter. We're in eighth gear and we're doing 70 miles an hour at round about 1600 revs. Nice and quiet. Good feel to the, the car on the road. And you could double the speed easy. I'll put it back in comfort because, let's just click that, oops, went too far, comfort, so we're back in comfort, car's going up, not as, not feeling as much bounce on the road, just, actually we just, it's a noisy part of the motorway that, and this is, this is pretty quiet, it's nice smooth here, and if we move into the outside lane in a second, to overtake this car, you'll hear it go noisy again. That's that's feels like you could stop quicker on this half of the motorway, but but you'd rather be on that half. You got your uh, let's just see. Over the right hand side there, if I click that, that gives you the options of your controls for your uh, sat nav. If I move it, it's telling me where we're going, what's on the, uh, on my, playing on the audio system at the moment, how, oh gosh, I just knocked it accidentally there, how many miles we've got to uh, go. 175 mile fuel left before we have to fill up. The battery, what the battery's charging at, 13.3 volts. And uh, I've no idea what that one is. The cruise is on, it's giving me the date, the time, the outside air temperature, 23 degrees. And over on the outside there, we've got fuel gauge at the bottom, coolant temperature gauge, I think it's. Uh, could be wrong actually. Yeah, coolant temperature gauge on the top right hand side. On the far left, we've got oil temperature and oil pressure. The speedo, which in, in Porsches are, are, is really naff. I'm actually going too fast and I, I didn't mean to be, you just don't know you're moving. So I'll put the cruise back on again. If I click up, that should resume to 70. Yep, there we go. Um, so, Porsche Speedos, they go up in increments of, I'm 
25 miles an hour, which is, uh, you know, you, you can't really tell when you're doing 30 and you can't really tell, you've not got a line when you're doing 70 over here. So far better going off the digital one in the uh, rev counter. Mule and milk there. Just shaking all his uh, yogurts up, having a bit of a tank slapper moment. Almost turning into another car. For some reason, he's staying in the middle lane. In the front central armrest there, you've got a power socket, you've also got a USB, an auxiliary in. And that, um, the, the bit I was telling you before, the armrest here, the armrest, if you can see, I put, put on a bit of weight on holiday, um, if you can see there, again, it's carried on onto the B pillar. Really, really well finished. A lot of thought gone into everything. All, all the controls, so nice. The, um, one of the things on the spec sheet is color-coded keys. I think they were 168 pounds, but, but I didn't mention it because I'd be too embarrassed to ask for a color-coded key. Uh, and, and then pay £168 extra for it. <laughs> but uh, Porsche owners. Nice thick steering wheel. Everything just falls to hand like, like so. Quarter to three position. Your fingers at the back there. You can change using your fingers at the back or your thumbs just drop nicely onto these little aluminium paddles there. Telephone controls. Answer and dink. Let's just go back to, that's giving you the ride time, distance, your phone. I mean, I can, I can just imagine jumping in this and, and driving a thousand miles and it's just no effort. It's 70 miles an hour, it's really quiet. And that's the sport switch. So it holds it in gear longer. But we just want comfort. Nice sculpted seats. The electric operation there on the side. Again, nice, well, it feels like aluminium um, buttons. Indicators on the left. Wipers on the right, the rear wash wipe as well. Kind of Volvo, just he, he. Oh. could have moved out. No, brain dead. Um, having said that, I can't say too much about Volvos because Volvo UK are kindly lending me a a Volvo V70 in a couple of weeks to uh, test drive. Uh, I don't know which camera's just gone off there. It's great to be back.
So we're just coming off the motorway now, and there's uh, quite a good stretch of road which I like through the, the country. And um, I've, I'm, I'm going to put it back onto sport suspension. It's, it's, there's just a little like chicane which I usually uh, use to, to load the front wheels from side to side. Just make sure there's no knocks on the suspension. But it's also a good test of the car steering. Why would you brake? Just why? No judders from the brakes or anything, all the discs are all good. And just play with the paddle shift as well, going up this uh, country lane, going too fast again. It's so it's so smooth and quiet, you just don't know you're moving. There we go. So I'm going to change it to PSM Sport. I'll put it in Sport as well, have the whole effect. There we go. Make sure there's nothing just on the top here. There we go. And then, let's see, just click right, left, right, left again. No creaks, no knocks, just lots of fun. So I'll finish the test drive there. Um, beautiful car, uh, as I say, you advertise on Autostrader and eBay and all that lot, and you, you've got pictures. We try and do a little, go a little bit further than other people by doing a video on a test drive. But even that, and I, I shoot my videos in 4K, I, I try to do them as best as I can um, and show you as much as possible. But even with 100 pictures, a 30 minute video, you still need to see this car yourself because it's, it's an eyeful it's, and it's mint. So thanks for watching, um, it's great to be back off holiday and uh, I'll see you in the next video.